All the best stories involve espionage and kidnapping, right? Well, apparently in space, some of them really do. Today on Vintage Space, we are looking at the time the CIA kidnapped a lunatic spacecraft. All right, so this is a really neat one, in part because some of the documents relating to this incident haven't even been released, and those that have do have large black areas of the text marked out so that you can't actually read things like some dates and place names. But it is nevertheless a fantastic story. So Lunik, also called Luna, was the Soviet lunar program designed to first impact orbit and land on the moon. This is the program that returned the first ever images of the moon's far side and also delivered the Lunacod rovers to the moon's surface in the 1970s. And it got off to a way better start than any American lunar program did. So at some point around late 1959 or early 1960, the Soviet Union went on a multinational tour showing off some of its economic and technological triumphs, including Sputnik and Lunik. Included in the traveling exhibit were models of these two spacecraft, or at least what the CIA imagined would be models, because it would be insane for the Soviet Union to be traveling around the world with an actual production article of a Lunik spacecraft, right? Well, apparently not. Some CIA agents actually had unrestricted access to the Lunik that was traveling around with this expo for 24 hours and realized that it was not a model, it was an actual flight article. There was so much to learn from this that they really wanted better access to it. Namely, they wanted to be able to take it apart, photograph the inside, understand how it all worked, and then put it all back together again, of course, without the Soviet Union knowing that they had borrowed the spacecraft. Of course, this was way easier said than done because the Lunik was so heavily guarded during this traveling expo. So the CIA looked for a weak link somewhere along the chain, and they found one. Because the expo was a traveling one, each piece of the exhibit had to be transferred by truck, then by rail from venue to venue. And there was a chance for the CIA to intercept the truck carrying Lunik on its way to a rail yard. And that's just what they did. One night, the CIA managed to divert the truck carrying Lunik off at the last possible turnoff before it reached the rail yard. Then they hijacked the truck slash sent the driver off to a hotel for the night and backed it up into a salvage yard nearby that was chosen because it had very high, very thick walls. Then under cover of night, they pried the lid off the crate, exposing the lunic, descended into the crate with rope ladders and stocking feet so they wouldn't leave any traces and took the entire spacecraft apart. They photographed it, analyzed it, documented the whole thing. And before the sun came up, they'd put the whole thing back together, put the lid back on the crate and delivered lunic in its crate looking untouched to the rail yard. The guard arrived for work that morning and added Lunik to the list of things going to the next city and then it went off on its way. There's no evidence to say whether the Soviet Union ever found out that CIA agents spent a romantic night with a Lunik spacecraft, but it did really have some benefits for the United States. Having a good knowledge of Lunik's dry weight and its actual size helped experts figure out what its wet weight was, or its weight with fuel as it would be in a launch. This in turn helped the intelligence agents that then tracked later Lunik flights. They were able to say that if we know the mass of one part of the payload, the other half, namely the booster, we can determine how heavy it is and what its power is. This really helped the US understand the true might of the Soviet boosters in the early 1960s, which in turn shed light on their real capabilities. It might be a stretch to say that kidnapping Lunik played a major hand in the US overtaking the Soviet Union in the space race, but it is an interesting piece of the puzzle in understanding how the Soviet space program worked from the US's perspective that did probably help level the playing field just a little bit. There is a lot more to say about this, not only about the reasons why it would be important to kidnap the Lunik spacecraft, but the actual details of the story itself. Too much for a video, so I've gone into it in more detail on my latest blog post over on Vintage Space at Popular Science, so be sure to check that out. There is a link in the description below. So do you guys have other questions about space heists or anything else in space? Because I don't think there are that many heists to speak of. Let me know in the comment section below and of course any other related questions, comments, or things you want to know about, leave them there as well. Be sure to follow me on Twitter as AST Vintage Space for daily vintage space type content. And of course with two episodes going up right here a week, usually Tuesdays and Fridays, but sometimes Wednesdays and Saturdays, subscribe so you never miss an episode.